Good morning and welcome to today's morning prayer and worship uh, on today, Tuesday the 28th of April. Really thrilled that we're able to join together in worshipping the Lord today and hearing from his word and praying to him. So let's have a couple of moments of quiet as we prepare ourselves to worship the Lord. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to listen to a setting of Psalm 23, a well-known and well-loved psalm. So let's listen to that and use that to reflect upon the truths contained in that psalm and to turn those words back to the Lord in prayer to him.
our next part of John 11, the reading that we're working our way through, is, um, well, well, we'll recap a little bit on what we looked at yesterday. So let's start from verse 33, shall we? And we'll go to verse 39. So John chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 33. When Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. Yesterday we spent a bit of time focusing upon Jesus' tears and uh, the, the amazing truth that we can, can see from there about Jesus' love for us and his um is experiencing the same things that we experience. Today we're going to think a bit more about Jesus' powerful emotions that he shows here. Verse 33, as we go back, says that Jesus was deeply moved in spirit and troubled when he saw the grief and the lamenting and the pain in Mary and the others who were gathered there. Then later on in verse 38, it says again, once more, Jesus was deeply moved as he came to the tomb where his friend Lazarus lay dead. Now, these are really powerful words that are used here. When it says deeply moved, the, the Greek really is getting at the, the idea of the snorting of a horse. That's the idea that's being portrayed here. Jesus was outraged. He was furious. That's what's being said here. And when it says that he was troubled, it's this idea of being disorientated, being di confused, being bewildered at the situation. And of course, as we saw yesterday, he, he broke down in tears. He wept. Now, we might be saying, well, why would Jesus respond in that way? I mean, he knows that in just a couple of minutes, Lazarus is going to be alive again. He knows in just a couple of minutes, all those tears of grief and pain are going to be changed into tears of joy. And yet still, when Jesus is confronted by that painful reality of death, he weeps. He's outraged. He's furious at it. He's bewildered and confused by it. Now, I think those emotions are telling us something very profound about the reality of death. Because what does our culture at the moment say about death? Well, our culture it says, well, you know, death, it, it's, it's natural. It's natural. It's, it's one of those things. You know, it's, it's, it's the circle of life. It's sliding into nothingness. It, it would be silly to fear something natural. That's just part of life is death. It's an 100% mortality rate. And of course, we're able to keep up that charade for so long. But before long, the mask slips. And as we're seeing at the moment in this this terrible uh, pandemic that we're facing death doesn't feel very natural death doesn't feel like just one of those things it doesn't feel like just a, a sliding into nothingness and many people are not finding death just no big deal but they're finding it something incredibly fearful something incredibly painful You see, Jesus, I think, gives us something, a more honest answer to the reality of death. When we see Jesus confronted with death and him responding with these incredibly powerful emotions, even though he knows that Lazarus is going to be alive in just a few minutes, he shows us that death is very, very unnatural. Jesus shows us that death is always unnatural, no matter how many years somebody lives to. 
death is always an intruding enemy in our life, bringing pain and destruction. Death is not part of how life is supposed to be. It is the consequence of the fall, the consequence of the brokenness of sin in this world. Now that's a very incre very important <coughs> thing for us to recognise about death. That it is unnatural. That it is an enemy. Now as we're going to see in just a few verses time, thankfully it is a defeated enemy. And actually that death has lost its sting for those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ because he has beaten it. But that doesn't take away from the fact that as we still continue to experience the horrific reality of death, this side of glory, it is right that we recognise it as unnatural, as an enemy. And it is right, particularly at this time, for us to lament and grieve over its presence in our life, in our community, in our nation, in our world. And one of the, the great things is that we can take that grief and those emotions and offer them up to the Lord in prayer. It's one of the great privileges of belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ, that we can pray to God as our Father and tell him how we are feeling. So let's do that now as we turn to prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful. And lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.